This is WCGR News. Your campus news starts now. Coming up on WCGR News, we take an inside look at ACT's production of The Seagull. We also look back at Concordia's 50-hour peace fire. And we'll get people pumped up for WCGR's upcoming semester, showing everyone how we operate here and encouraging anyone to be a part of WCGR. Thanks for joining us on WCGR News. I'm Emily Longman. And I'm Alex Pat. Our newscast begins with taking a look at Artists of Concordia Theater's latest fall production, the adaptation of The Seagull. Emily Longman and Nicole Garza have the story. Artists of Concordia Theater just struck the set on their latest show, The Seagull. We checked it out and interviewed the actors to see an inside scoop. We had young, aspiring actors in our department that needed and wanted to do this kind of uh, play and this challenge. I want them to see themselves on that stage and understand something about themselves. It's very self-referential for art. Out of all of Chekhov's plays, it's more about art than any of the other ones, okay? It's more about theater specifically, what theater should be, where theater is going. This show is about old versus new. You have old ideas versus new and up and coming ideas. You have old generations conflicting with new generations. It's much more about characters and much more about themes. The old generations like this is what they know and then new generations are coming in and changing life as they know it. So we have all these people on this farm and each one of them, the, one of the only things they ha all have in common is that they all want something really, really badly. And if they, th they think that if they have that one thing, everything in their lives is going to be better but none of them ever really get it. The biggest thing I really think that this show should have the audience question is their goals. What do you want out of life? And is it always the best thing? And then also with the way you try and get it. There's a lot of, there's a lot of motivations in this play and it's mostly about trying to make your own life happy. And as we can see from the play, sometimes trying to make yourself happy has consequences for other people in your life, but also it has big consequences for your own life. And I think it's a good play to look at back at your own goals and values. To me, every piece of theater in this day and age needs to say something about theater. It needs to bring something new to the theatrical experience so that you want to be a part of an audience to change the time period, okay? Um, I love taking classics and messing with them, doing plays that are pertinent to what's going on. And so you want the audience to understand it see themselves in it and not be terribly alienated from it. Look at this classic piece of theater and say, no, it's new, it's vibrant. So that's why I chose the early, not the late, the early 60s, okay? We recognize it as our own time. We see, if not ourselves, maybe our parents. It makes it more relatable to the audience um, than not many people know about 1890s Russia, uh, but more people um, in America are much more familiar with what's going, what went on in the 1960s. Layering in the elements of that time, so like adding in all the music and the costumes and like how people interact within the world of the 60s rather than being in Russia. That kind of music really hits the nail on the head when it comes to that, the, the tone Chekhov is going for. It's happy but melancholic all at the same time. We also asked them to tell us how they researched and brought their characters to life. You're a character on stage, you try and make that character a person. And, uh, you know, it was more of like making choices like, uh, yeah, that's funny, but what would a real person do with this? I did research on what old women in the 1960s would have been like how conservative they would have been, how not conservative, especially considering that Soren was more like an activist. I did a little uh, research in what were people like in the 40s, and I'm a little bit of an older character in this show. That meant looking at the life of like Sinatra. Much of the inspiration for the characters came from real people, and that made the show just that much more personal. It was an outstanding run, and we look forward to their next production coming up in the spring. This has been Emily Longman and Nicole Garza, reporting for WCGR News. ACT never fails to put on impressive productions. Congratulations to all who were involved. In other news, Concordia's Ministry to the World organized a 50-hour peace fire in the Triangle to bring people together for prayer and worship. 
Alex Pat and Brad Rossolo braved the cold and went out to get the story. As a faith-based university, Concordia Chicago is always looking to bring together people for worship. This year, a 50-hour peace fire was held in the Triangle on the weekend before Thanksgiving. Starting on November 20th and ending on November 22nd, smoke poured out of the Triangle as the fire for peace burned through the frigid air. Among the attendant students were special guests from both on-campus organizations and from the OPRF community. To keep participants warm, a tent providing complimentary hot chocolate was also located in the Triangle. Uh, what we're doing here at the Peace Fire is a, uh, it's just a celebration of uh, Christian unity. Um, the fact that we can gather together in the spirit and, uh, and uh, just celebrate the peace that God gives us. And um, what we're doing is we're going to show that, we're going to raise awareness to violence, um, domestic, national, international. Uh, we're going to be uh, just opening people's eyes to stuff that's going on in the world. And um, again, like I said, sharing that unity in Christ to, to give hope beyond that. Student-led activities included biblical readings, prayers, and campfire songs. There was always a student present at the fire, even in the early a.m. hours, to ensure the fire kept burning for 50 straight hours. The Concordia students who coordinated this event are very grateful for those who came out and participated along with them. For WCGR News, I'm Alex Pat. Really a great job by our student ministry for putting this on and making it successful. And props to those who stayed out there in the cold hours of the night. Well, we here at WCGR would like to close out this semester by showing you a promotional video of ours created by WCGR General Manager, Rebecca Keener. Have a great show. Thanks. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. On today's show, we're going to be talking about how and why you should get involved with Concordia Chicago's WCGR TV and radio. So stick around. WCGR is a radio and television station on campus. It's inclusive, vibrant, and led by a group of students. Concordia has a full-fledged news program that provides students with valuable on-hands experience from day one. WCGR News teaches skills in editing, shooting, and writing, paired with the opportunity to serve in various roles, such as photographer, director, anchor, reporter, and more. WCGR Radio allows students to host or manage a show. These on-campus radio shows give students the chance to play and talk about whatever they want, with few restrictions. If you aren't looking for an on-campus activity, but still enjoy movies and music, WCGR embraces these art forms in downtown Chicago by attending concerts of up-and-coming musicians and events like the Chicago International Film Festival. Regardless of your major, WCGR is a great campus activity for any student looking to get involved, grow their craft, or expand their resume. We hope you'll check us out. From all of us here at WCGR, have a great evening. We'll see you next time. We are really thankful for the crew we have and are always looking for more people to become part of our group. It's a lot of fun and you learn a lot. Next semester is the perfect opportunity to join us here. Well, that wraps it up here at WCGR News for the semester. I'm Emily Longman. And I'm Alex Pat. And have a Merry Christmas, everybody. Now.